Welcome back, everyone. Looks like uh, I forgot to fix the uh, observer settings there, so we are just now jumping into this game here on MLG Daybreak as our second map. And going back to that first match, I, mean, I don't ever think Grubby really had a chance. <laughs> I, I, I mean, even in the, the chat, for Grubby, for, for him to not feel, for him to not be happy almost, I, this guy is always, always in such a good mood. And even he himself seemed a little bit down. I mean, he yeah, has not won a single match in this tournament so it's, far. I mean, it's been off to a rough start, right? He, you know, you've probably come into the first group phase and you lose a couple of those matches. You're like, okay, I can still get it. There's a shot. These other, you know, two more people are going to be added to my group. Yeah. And then it, you know, it, it happened and it actually didn't get any better for him. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm, I'm one of the biggest Grubby fans out there, but. He's two and eight with the the map uh, win loss and zero and four in his group, and possibly about to be two and ten and zero and five. But if he can actually pull this out, it would just be a huge, huge boost of confidence for him in this tournament. So, Rob, why don't you introduce our players? Over here on the left side of Daybreak, representing his own team as the Red Protoss, we've got Grubby and his opponent. Leading 1-0 in the series. Only one map away from continuing his pretty impressive run in the group so far. We've got Fanatics Alive. So the big thing here, Rob, I'm, we were both looking over the pool, and if Alive wins this, it puts him at 3-1. and one. Then he goes on to play Rain, which we'll be casting right after this match. And if he takes out Rain, he will win his group. Those yep. are the last two maps, or excuse me, matches in this pool. If he loses, that puts him, the STC, odds, and potentially parting if he loses his match. Uh, let's see, who is he actually playing as we uh, well, try we, to find that, Rob? Yeah. We'll, we'll look in the game here. I'm actually thinking and, that maybe... Wow, Grubby getting so, so almost lucky finding this SCV with the proxy racks. And that is not going to be good for Alive. I mean, he's basically going to have to cancel this as that will not finish with that racks. Yeah, so it, it was what I thought happened. The parting rain match just wasn't updated yet. Oh, okay. So that actually means that if uh, Alive wins out, he'll be tied for first with parting. Oh, so okay. However, so we're going to have a two-weight. So Alive needs to win this and rain to tie parting 4-1 and yeah. have a playoff later tonight. Let me refresh and double-check that. For those of you at home, make sure to check out Liquipedia. It is the place for all information, everything. Yeah. And guys, now I got used to the uh, switch, uh, uh, the inverse rather of the uh, mouse wheel and uh, messing up with that. So I am incredibly sorry. But Rob, let's focus on this game. I mean, we already had a proxy racks being canceled for a live. And you can see right here that now he's just going for the one racks at fan, which is definitely a safe, safe deal to do after this. Uh, your opponent is not doing anything crazy. Looks like he's just going for that one racks expand here potentially as uh, he's once again starting to save up minerals. He could drop a robotics facility, though. It is just, it is just basically a, uh, you can do both. You can go Nexus first, or you can do a robotics facility first. And what Grubby does, it's not potentially going to change all that much. Oh, OK, he's just going to go for a three gate. Yeah, so once again, getting, whoa, actually only putting down one of those gateways. Maybe some sneaky stuff is going to happen. He, I guess he just changed his mind. Well, he is hiding this uh, probe over here. That oh. Makes, oh, okay. Wow. Alive with the Spidey Sense. Getting yeah. down into the third with a single Marine. Yeah. So he's going uh, for a two-gate expand here uh, in the Protoss side of things. Meanwhile, uh, we could see Alive starting to add on the racks. Will he add on two more? No, he's actually getting gas here. So uh, very, very different openings uh, for these two players. Here's that forward pylon going down for Grubby. And hopefully uh, the Marines of Ali Alive will not spot this. Huh. So this is actually a pretty common pylon placement. So if Alive got down there and found the other probe, I would expect him to be able to find that pylon. It's just such a clever place to put things, too, because it's right outside of that Zelnaga tower. So I like all those clever little sneaky things. Right. And well right here. Out. We actually see a bunker going down. Alive is somewhat fearful of Grubby. I mean, he saw that uh, probe go down over here, so he's, he's maybe thinking something crazy is up. He's also got an SCV that just... Uh, uh, oh, 
Oh. All right, he forgot to move it down, but he did see at least uh, the robotics facility and that warp gate and the expansion. He knew that that was all that he was looking for. His scout actually didn't matter too much. Oh man, the Stalker's catching a couple of Marines out of position if Grebby is able to pick these off. Maybe he can keep up some of his aggression. I'm not sure that Grebby has been able to get up into that natural and see the expand quite yet. He has not taken any actual HP damage on those Stalkers from that exchange. Grebby was not able to get up there and get the information on the natural. And uh, we see right here that the Zealot at the Zelnaga Tower is going to try to use that fog, but will not earn a kill. But these three Stalkers might be able to cut this off as does he have the warp gates oh. uh, to warp in anything else? No, not yet. He's just going straight yes. towards the natural. And oh. this is not good for Grubby uh -oh. as how many Stalkers he's going to lose here? Looks like only one, but a lot of HP oh, lost on this other one. I actually don't think that, that. Let's check again and see if those Stalkers were even able to see the expansion this time. Real quick, going to his view. Yes, yes he okay. finally did see it. So uh, he's actually just fallen back across the map right now. And as Alive just stays active with his Marines, he's just going to be buying time until Stim is finished up. He's adding on a reactor and wrapping up his starport. You can bet we're going to see some medevacs out of him. He's also got his engineering bay down. Alive is planning on some really heavy infantry play. Yeah, we see the uh, stim pack upgrade already going down. And uh, here are the two medevacs, actually, uh, about to be started on this starport. And probably going to see him once again go for an attack after that. Uh, these three stalkers are actually being pretty sneaky here. Uh, immediately starting on that factory, I'm not sure. I guess they just went for that off the Zelnaga Tower site. He's got to be careful as, uh, well, he actually does not have concussive shell on that Marauder. So... Uh, potentially forgetful by alive. I guess he did just get these uh, tech labs, though, in the main. Already getting one uh, with STEM almost finished, and then adding on the two reactors, as well as two more racks. So, adding on those two more racks is going to be <laughs> imperative to alive strategy, being that he's just pumping out lots of medevacs and doing some infantry pushing. Now, we see Grubby. I mean, he's going to have to get out Colossa so fast here because Alive's going to be staying active with these medevacs. We see a drop potentially coming around the bottom side of the map. Grubby doesn't really have anything left in his base for defense. We don't see too many of the pylon. He's done a great job overlapping his pylons so that he won't have any real issues. So of course Alive makes the decision to run down to the probes and take out a few of those. Now the Zealots and Stalkers make it back in. Oh man, he is even going to take out one Zealot in addition to and also escape now he's pushing into the front with a stem taking down another few probes there oh man those force fields actually almost enabling alive to take out oh only one of the sentries all right so oh. uh -oh. you know he lost a lot to that we still have this other drop actually going on now in the mains killing a lot of these probes how many probes is he actually down to 34 wow. compared to 52 and the Colossus tech has been scouted. See him getting plus one armor. That is, is of course, uh, to utilize uh, the Guardian Shield and really just take that much less damage on his Marines and uh, Marauders. But he's going for a drop. And at this point in the game, Grubby's got to figure something out because his army is just its just not that big right now. Mm -mm. I mean, both of them aren't don't have that many units out on the field. Alive is kind of just waiting for more stuff. He stayed so active with those medevacs and with those infantry that, I mean, they, they were just going to end up evaporating, but it was a good choice because he still traded infantry for a large chunk of Grubby's army, and he doesn't have a good way to catch up on economy. He doesn't have the same mechanics available. And here is another drop coming out of Alive. He's going to be able to chew through those three zealots. Here's oh. some more army, though, of Grubby's coming in really one by one, uh, basically getting into Alive's arc. He's uh, taken down a ton of of oh. these probes, getting the assimilator, but now the two Colossus will finally chase that away. But at the same time, we got another drop over here at the natural, and he is just destroying the economy of Grubby. Yeah, sticking to his multi prong play is just very good. Grubby hasn't been making much additional stalkers. He's not keeping his stalkers in places that he can defend drops. And we actually saw a brief moment where two of those Colossus were very vulnerable. Right, he started moving them down almost by themselves. I was surprised that Alive opted to run away, although it's easy to just assume that your opponent is going to be able to surround you somewhere or, or finish you off because maybe it's not worth trading. If you don't kill that Colossus and you just lose a ton of units, bad news. 
And there is the heel and uh, the liftoff. And looks like he's going to continue this harassment going straight back into the main with this drop. And it looks like this drop is going to go into the center, but it was scouted for just a second. This is very scary stuff, though. It's over here as uh, Alive takes his third base. Mm -hmm. There are units waiting for him in Grubby's main. All right now Grubby's staying in a position where he can stop those drops a little more preemptively. But Alive at this point just has so much stuff on the field. Just taking a look at the army count. He's got about double his, uh, his army worth in minerals. And that's pr primarily going to be just how big those uh, the Marines and Marauders end up being for that count. Now, Alive was actually uh, thinking of going in for a drop, and I don't even know if Grubby saw that because he definitely didn't react to it, and Alive just pulled back. He's blocking the third base here of Grubby while taking his own. Scan goes down. Oh, oh. no, he's going to be able to snipe two of these Templars. Psy Storm is not even finished yet, but that does mean it's going to be one less feedback or one wow. less Archon. He is just on fire here with this unit control. Yeah, Alive also got in there and sniped a sentry as well, right? So he got in, killed two Templar and a sentry and a zealot Yeah. for the price of like a stim and a marine. And uh, I mean, look at the supply. The macro of Alive is on fire compared to Grubby's. 178, almost 180 supply here for the Terran player. 116 for Grubby and... Just looking at this army in front of us right now compared to this army kind of spread out across this base. This is the push to, to basically put the nail in the coffin and Grubby will be going 0-5 in this uh, tournament. Yeah, but Grubby is not one to give up. Here he goes trying to counter that push. Oh no, but he's only got one Colossus there in the back and there are just so many Vikings able to finish off that Colossus and in come the rest of the Marines and the Marauders even landing the Vikings so that they can attack the remaining units and act as a meat shield. They're absorbing the storm and the infantry doesn't care. The Vikings have effectively already done their job and there is the GG from Grubby. Alive takes the series 2-0. Yeah, and, and one step closer to potentially getting first in this group. Yeah, Grubby actually was saying a good game, amazing play. So I mean, that's just the kind of manner man that Grubby is. Always very uh, respective of any opponent that he's playing, whether it's, it's someone in the open bracket or whether it's someone like Alive here on uh, the second day of the MLG Winter Championship. So, Rob, that means we got one game done and one game left for Alive. Is now he's going up against Rain. Your quick thoughts on that match uh, before this commercial break. My, my thoughts against Alive versus Rain? Yeah. Well, the first thing is that this series is potentially going to be long. Yeah. I mean, so that means that, ladies and gentlemen, don't go anywhere while we go to this brief break because when we come back, we are going to have a live versus rain to wrap up the night and Pool D. I'm Rob Simpson. I'm JP McDaniel. Go get some food. Go get a beer. Go get a campfire because we might be in for a long time. It's going to get cold. It's going to get very quiet over here because we might be in for a very long match coming up right after this break. <laughs>